Okay, you're on tour with uh, Delane and Ever Grey. How's the tour been going so far? The tour has been great. It's been a very successful tour, I think, for all bands. Uh, and as a package, I think it's been a wonderful mix of music for the audience. Uh, it seems to have gone over very well. Um, the bands are great in terms of the people and everyone's getting along and uh, I think it's been a wonderful tour. One of my favorites, I would say, yeah. for the bill. And have you been getting plenty of people coming down right for the start to see you guys? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Cause that's always a, the bit when someone's putting together a package, it's, you're never quite sure whether the fans are going to come for the opening bands or whether they're just going to come along later for the headliner. Yeah, absolutely. I think though we've been around the block for a couple of years now and so we're not quite an unknown name completely, no. you know. Yeah, well it's seven years since you first started playing in the UK. Yeah. Yeah, and that was in front of about, what, 20 fans? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and now that. you're playing in front of hundreds, <laughs> so it's, uh, you've definitely come a long way in that time. Still yeah. working at it, yeah. Yeah, I think it's one of you've got to keep working at it because it's a never ending thing. If you just coast then other bands overtake you and It is, yes, it is and um and it's good to set bars and challenges for yourself. Yeah. And you've been busy recording a new album? Uh yes, we're done recording. We did it in the first three months of the new year and uh it's in the mixing process right now. Right. Going to be mastered after this tour. And then next year it will be split into two separate releases just due to the volume of music. Right, so rather than doing it as one double album, it's going to be two single albums. Yeah. yeah, so the fourth, it will still be considered the fourth album, but yeah, the first one will come February 24th, second in October, so people have a six month window to absorb that yeah. and get ready for some more. <laughs> yeah, it's quite difficult to do the to get the timing right because if it's too big a gap then that's no good but if it's too close together then will people buy both and well uh, it it would have come as a package if it was a double album you know um it is a double album and we recorded it as such but napalm thought it was smarter to split it up because of the fact that it's uh two full length albums right yeah and the same things happened this year with Tanya doing her album yeah, it was going to be the double album and it got released the two single albums okay so. yeah yeah and where did you record it it was denmark wasn't it yes yeah. reap denmark uh it's the oldest settlement in denmark actually and it's very beautiful uh very isolated and we stayed there well i was there for three months uh yasha was there for two months and the other guys were there for a month and a half um and yeah we just lived there yeah, it's a long time to be recording an album, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well the first month was uh, writing, yeah. then the second and third month was recording. Right, yeah. yeah. And do you think the isolation helped with the writing process? Definitely, yeah, yeah. we were very focused, the pressure was on us, um, and uh, really pushed us to challenge ourselves and go outside of the box too. and. Uh, it was kind of a miserable experience for me. I was just so stressed out, but I did it to myself, you know uh, But really great things happened out of it. Yeah, right. Yeah, because I think some people respond well to the isolation others you know, prefer a sort of city life and you know, More stimulation yeah. to give them ideas. It's Yeah, different, different things work for different people. I Absolutely uh, Unfortunately, no one got a choice here <laughs> because I said we're going to Denmark and this is the producer so <laughs> that was the way it was and fortunately uh, it worked it worked for uh, everybody there you know right and who was the producer you came? Jacob Hansen right yeah, yeah. a very well known name there yeah. <laughs> yeah and yeah is he doing the mixing as well yep. right. yeah yeah he is great mixer yeah uh, so when do you when do you get to the point where you can actually hear the mixers coming back and say, oh yeah, I like that, or can you change this? Mm -hmm. We actually have had the first round of mixes for all the songs already. Uh, now we are just in the the little tidbit phase where we're sending back all the little tweaks, anything we want to add, maybe sounds or some orchestration, um, and so now we're just waiting for the 
hopefully the final mix. It usually takes three uh, in the past, so I'm guessing there will be some songs that we're still going to go back on, back and forth on, but we've heard everything already. Yeah, because yeah, I imagine there must be some songs where you think, well, let's make this change, then you hear it with that change, and actually I preferred it how it was before. Yeah, yeah. that definitely happens sometimes. Yeah, and that's why it's good with an experienced producer like him, then he's throwing his suggestion in as well as, as you. Yeah, he, uh, I mean, his mixes, I really think that's one of his primary gifts, is his mix. His mix is really wonderful, I believe, and uh, I think there's a lot of artists that have had their albums mixed by him that would agree with that. And so there's not so much actually that really needs to change when we hear things. Mostly we're just adding the instruments or sounds that we think have been missed that we have not filled in yet. Yeah. yeah. And you, you raised the funds for the recording through a crowdfunding campaign with mm -hmm. Pledge Music. How did you find that? Uh, it was great. It was very helpful for us um, in regards to getting in the studio at that moment when we needed to and getting the project underway. And also it was really cool to involve everyone that has supported and believed in us uh, because essentially they're investing in, um, in the product that's coming and saying we believe in you guys to do a good job, you know. Uh, everyone kind of made the album in a way, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's quite uh, a vote of confidence in that people are giving you their money for the album before they've even heard a single song or before yeah. it's even been recorded. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no pressure at all. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> kidding. <laughs> yeah, and I think you had some some you know, publicity photos done by Tim Funko, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, we did. That was awesome. Tim is a very talented photographer. He oh, has yes, a yeah. very special eye. Yeah, and yeah, his studio stuff in particular is just so well done. It's oh yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. 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 And he's such a nice guy as well. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Lovely. And of course, since then you've you've signed to Napalm. Yeah. Uh, what made you choose Napalm? Um, well, they're a very, uh, I guess, vital and innovative team, I think, for the industry and the way it has modernized and changed over the last couple decades. Um, they're trying to grow their record label and they have uh, so many ideas and ways of working with artists and pushing them in, I think, a brilliant way for uh, what's going on today and so I think there could have been no other choice that would have been better for us I'm really happy to be a part of their team right. yeah. and they've got so many great bands on that label as well they it? really so, do yeah, yeah. yeah they're yeah. very productive too which I can't say for all labels <laughs> <laughs> and I said yeah having other bands on the label it must help when it comes to getting the doors as well. yeah um, I mean I don't know yet uh, this was a very um, fortunate circumstance because we were invited on this tour by Delane's manager, uh, Sharon Richardson, and that had nothing to do with Napalm, but it was, but everyone was happy in the end because yes. it was Napalm and Napalm, you know, so it was uh, good for everyone, but um, uh, we'll have to see, you know, what happens down the road for tours. Um, tours are very unpredictable. Especially yeah. when you're still really growing your fan base, like us, we've been opening for quite some time and uh, uh, we never know what's going to happen or no. who's going to invite <laughs> us or, you know, yeah. Yeah. And are there any cover versions on the new album? Uh, there is one cover. I don't want to talk <laughs> about it yet because uh, it's, uh, I think we should wait a while. It's coming in October. Right. Yeah. yeah. But there is something that's very near and dear to my heart and I think has to do with everyone uh, hanging in this together. Yeah. Right, yeah, because obviously you've done tour, yeah, a cover version live right from the very beginning. You had Motet on you know, the first album. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, then you did the EP with all the Canadian artists that you covered, including Alana Miles, which you did a fantastic job on. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, because yeah, she's much. one of those voices, it's just such a, a difficult one to try and do, isn't it? It really was. It freaked me right out. I still, you know, can't believe I put a version out there because I just love her original so much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's going to be quite a, a scary prospect when, you, you know, <laughs> when you're doing such a well-known song as well because when everybody knows the song, 
Yeah. There's the instant comparison, whereas when it's a, a more unknown song, yeah. Yeah, people just listen to yours on his own merits. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah, but no, I, I thought it sounded really good and it was Thank a really you. nice video for it as well. Thank yeah. you very much. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much for your time. Oh, yeah, thanks so yeah. much. <laughs>